how to practice your draw following the rule of three and get real results in real time at a high level performance, avoiding the excuse of a cold performance drill. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, Brian Hill with a Complete Combatant Active Self-Protection Extra, and this is your Manage Dry Fire Monday. It's gonna be live because the problems of me operating a camera and the Mantis at the same time, it's easier with the timer for me. I'm used to doing that. I am an woefully an addict technically sometimes, and I understand that. I hope the information will make up for my, uh, you know, discrepancies. We're gonna practice the draw. I see a lot of people practicing the draw, and it's essential. It is the essential element for the armed citizen. Unlike military and law enforcement, we will work from the draw almost all the time, except in a very rare situation where we might have some indication and draw surreptitiously, but we're talking about our draw. And I see a lot of people apply things and they say, well, my draw is this, but then when I do this, it's this, or my cold performance is this. And the, what they're really saying is, I haven't practiced recently enough that it impacts my informants. And what I'm asking you as a serious student of the gun is to practice two or three times a week for five minutes. That's enough recency in the mind to keep you fresh, 72 hours. So whenever I do a cold drill, there's really nothing cold about it. All right, uh, I don't accept cold methodology, I didn't accept it in precision rifle world. I don't accept it now, because the only thing that's truly cold is how recent have I practiced. And if I refuse to practice and I wait long intervals between the time, I'm not really gaining technique, I'm, I'm having atrophy and I'm losing skill. So what I'm saying when I'm cold performing is it's been so long since I practiced that uh, I'm not able to do it at the skill I earned in practice before. So fix that. Get disciplined. Discipline is the way for all of us. Remember, this is the obstacle. That's the way for the stoic. And now we're going to improve ourselves by just applying ourselves mindfully for about five minutes. So here's how I practice my draw. Make sure I keep it in keeping with everything. I'm going to cut down the reps a little bit because who really wants to watch me practice all the time? I mean, I do, but I'm, you probably don't. All right, but this will give you a good way to practice it. First thing I practice is the extended prep and press. All right, this is the interaction of moving the hands, vision, and speed of trigger. Okay, it's only one shot each time, but I'm moving the hands out and I wanna make sure it's good. I'm gonna use my friend the timer on the last couple reps to measure and make sure that I'm not dillying or dallying, as Lee Weems would say, or lolly or gagging. Uh, as I like to say, that I'm actually being efficient and doing what I'm supposed to. All right, so let's look at it first. So this is the extended prep and press on the target. Target's not very far. Uh, it's not a drill for accuracy right now, although it could be. I could easily turn this into a long range accuracy precision drill, but right now I'm practicing the movement, seeing the sights and stopping the hands effectively while I prep the trigger was sufficient. Uh, I'm gonna shoot an alpha box on the USPSA. Okay, 5.8, five, 5.8, eight. Five, eight. all right? And usually I do a couple without the timer to warm up, but you know, nobody wants to watch that. So it's a dead center hit in the alpha box. It means I had a lot of time. I was really fixing everything as I went along. So let, let's see if I can pick up the motion a little bit. Okay, a 49, so almost a tenth off, just deciding to go faster. Did notice a bad habit, pulled the gun back too quickly afterwards. So let's get rid of that. We'll do one more rep and see if we can get it a little bit better this time. All right, saw everything, felt slower, yet it's faster. Human beings as time measurement instruments are woefully inadequate with because the part of the brain that tells time and cadence and whatnot is not the part we want shooting. Okay, so my extended prep and press is good. I'm getting on the trigger well. I'm seeing the dot. My hands are stopping effectively. The next part I'm going to practice is what I call organizing the support hand. So I already have the gun. I already have the hand on the gun, and I'll have my uh, support hand holding the garment. And what I'm really going to clearly practice is how quickly 
I can get my support hand on the gun with the extended prep and press. Okay, pretty good repetition of 77. Uh, it's a little slow, a little slow. Can do better than that, all right? Get a little more organized, be a little quicker on the beep. Everything's going well so far. Little hesitation, let's see what the timer says. Timer says it's 74. So we're still in the same thing. Let's see if I can get a little more time out of that. Get it just a bit quicker. Was quicker, kind of pulled the gun back. Got to be careful of that. Keeps creeping back in, a little habit I'm noticing. Uh, that's my first line break alpha. But a 63, so I feel pretty good about that. Now I'm going to do the complete draw. I'm doing three reps, and this is my stages of three. Because the rule of three says is that's the minimum number for a pattern, but the maximum number of techniques a human being can hold. So that's an important thing for me to know. If I do five steps or ten steps, I'm going to lose the process along the way. So now I'm going from concealment, and I'm going to get my hands together. And just to make the internet mad, I'm going to go from the cheater grip. So some good information there. Didn't get a great grip with my dominant hand. It was a 92, but everything worked out. I was able to correct. So even with not a good grip and a bit of correction there, still get an alpha and got a 92. Let's see if we can improve that. Oh, hoy. A little faster, a little faster. All right, let's see what that means. Okay, so it's an 88, all right. 88, still a little sloppy, still a little bit of a mess. Let's see if we can finish up this next one and prey on the beep a little bit more. Be a predator this time. All right, we're gonna take a mulligan, not a great grip. Grab the belt, getting out of the camera frame too. I like it. Let's see what the timer says. Timer says it likes it too, it's an 83. All right, so I got a good draw. Uh, some of you are gonna be really upset. I'm grabbing my shirt and telegraphing, but if you have your hands at your side next to a gun, you too are telegraphing your intent. I don't think there's any way not to telegraph unless I'm managing unknown contact, and then I'm telegraphing skill and intent anyway. So there's always gonna be a bit of telegraphing among the well-versed applicant of physical violence. Okay, so everything's gone well, but I think I need to do one more thing. If I'm gonna make this work, what I've seen is a tendency for the one shot draw to fall away in performance mode or when we fire two shots. So I'm gonna finish up with some doubles, okay? Should have enough rounds to do a couple doubles on this one. So I'm gonna get it out and see the pairs and see what it costs me on the timer and see if it's staying around that 90. If it does, everything's good. If it creeps past one, I'm gonna have a little bit of work to do. All right, so the numbers are good. Hope you can see that, there it is. All right, so it's a 90 and then a what, 20 split, all right? They're right next to each other, so everything's good. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. That's where I wanted to be, a 90 with a split. Let's do one more, let's see if we got enough rounds for that. Yes, we do. All right, good push on that one. So an 89 and a 23, and it's interesting. I'll take the .03 extra because even though the first shot was in the alpha, I cleaned it up a little bit on the second one. And this is the interesting thing. The harder you push yourself, the better your processing gets because you can start making some meaningful changes in real time instead of after the fact. So now I've practiced the draw from the extended prep and press, get my support hand on the gun. I've drawn and fired one, and now I've done two shots. So I can feel pretty confident that uh, these are my first shots of the day. So, you know, some of you could say it's cold, 
that this is the kind of thing that I can earn. Now, it's not very far, guys. I started at three yards uh, on this today and just worked on it. Let's go look at the target real quick, okay? All right, so since it's a speed and accuracy drill, I have to do what? Well, I have to let go of the idea of perfect accuracy, but everything's an alpha. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I feel successful at that. Uh, I, of course, sometimes I'll do it at different distances. So if I was to seven yards, I see about a tenth creep. If I'm at 25 yards, I see about a half second creep. And then I know if I'm shooting right, and I'll change these at different distances. So I hope that helps you out in your training, guys. It's important. Uh, your methodology has to do what? Has to reflect what you want in your training. I want a good draw. I want to be able to make multiple shots. I want to be able to make corrections in real time. So this is organizing that. And I used a bit of isolation drills to get me all fluid. And then I checked it with a real draw and a double draw. All right. So if you'll do this, you won't see these horrible drop offs that some of you see when you think you're cold or when you have to perform, you'll see something meaningful. And remember uh, on this plus or minus 10%, that's good. You know, if I get an 80 on one, I get a one on the other, I'm okay with that. I don't let that crush me. But if I see a bigger trend stack out, then I got to work on it. And I think the doubles is a good way to make sure that we don't do extra aiming when we fire more than one shot. Because that either means on the draw to the first shot, we're not aiming at all. So we have to apply a 0.2 value to it. Or we, we're seeing enough, we don't trust our intuition, therefore we can't make the shot, so we over aim and correct anyway. All right, guys, uh, get on your manis, get to work. Uh, your recoil meter will help you with the doubles so you can see how you're tracking it, you're aiming. Uh, your holster draw analysis is essential for the parts of this. You can't do it in thirds, but you can definitely track that. All right, guys, the Active Self-Protection Extra. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. And as always, measure, refine, and perform.